of the man of twists and turns. Risen time and again off course. After he sacked the proud heights of Troy. Many cities he saw. And learned the ways of their people. Heart sick, he suffered on the open sea. Fighting to save his life. And bring his comrades home. But he could not save the blind fools from disaster. Ruined, ruined by, by their own, own reckless, reckless ways. ways. Ten years had passed since the fall of Troy. By now, all who had survived the war were safe at home. All but for one man, Odysseus. His heart was set on his return home to Ithaca, to Penelope, his wife, and Telemachus, his only son. But the powerful goddess Calypso held him prisoner deep in her vaulted caves, craving him for a husband. And when the wheeling seasons brought the destined year of his return, the gods took pity all but for Poseidon, god of the sea, who still raged against Odysseus for the blinding of the Cyclops. But now, Poseidon was away from Mount Olympus, and sparkling-eyed Athena and mighty Zeus held counsel.
Greetings, stranger. Oh, come, ignore this rude company and come dine with me. And then you may tell me who you are and what has brought you here. I am Mentes, an old friend of your father's. I have heard a rumor he has come home. I see that gods have delayed him. But are you really his son? My, you have grown. You have his fine eyes. My mother says I am Odysseus' son. But no one can really be certain of their parentage. Who are these people? These arrogant feasters here? <laughs> <laughs> when my father was king here, no one dared abuse his hospitality. But it has been ten years since he left to fight the war at Troy. I have had no word of him. He has vanished. Now all these island nobles come to court my mother Penelope. She hates the idea of remarrying, but can't bring herself to finally reject all the suitors or accept one of them. Meanwhile, they continue feasting themselves and destroying my home, and will soon destroy me too. Disgraceful! If only Odysseus were here, there would be a quick death and a cold bed for them all. But his return is in the hands of the gods. Take my advice. Call an assembly of the Ithacans and publicly demand the suitors go home. Then choose your best ship and sail to Sparta to see your father's old friend and fellow soldier Menelaus. He may have some news of your missing father. When you return, you must find some way of ridding your house of this mob, either by stealth or an open fight. You are no longer a child. You need not stand for their insolence. Do you see? It is a sign. A sign? A bird? Nothing but a bird. Music! We need music. Where's the bard? <laughs> Sailed homeward toward the sun. Bright eyed Athena sped them. The wine dark sea they crossed. A hero's welcome met them. But one great king was lost. Odysseus was. Odysseus, sing any other tale. This one is too bitter and wears in my heart. Forgive me, Queen Penelope. Mother! <laughs> Why begrudge him his song? Poets are not to blame. And Odysseus is not the only one who never returned from Troy. Steal yourself to listen. Or go tend your weaving. Making decisions is my concern, for I am master in this house. <laughs> Gentlemen! From you who court my mother, this is sheer impudence. <laughs> I pray to Zeus, there will come a day of reckoning. And in this house, I will destroy you! Oh, 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 oh. oh, clearly the gods egg you on with your brazen tongue. As your father's son, you are heir to this land. May you never be its king. <laughs> <laughs> I intend at least to be the master of my own house. Oh. Assembly! 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 Ithacans. You may be wondering who has called this assembly together, the first of its kind in twenty years. It is I, Telemachus. A double affliction has fallen on my house. I have lost my noble father, who was once your gentle king. Now these suitors badger my mother, and with their unwelcome attentions against all custom, spend all day in and out of our house, slaughtering our livestock, devouring our goods, Wasting all our wealth. With my father gone, I cannot defend it alone and untrained. It is a scandalous injustice. Where is your outrage? Have you no fear of the gods' anger? Lemachus. Such a temper. So, you would place the blame on us. 
Well, we suitors plead not guilty. Blame your own scheming mother. For three years, she has been leading us on, raising our hopes, giving us all false promises. An example of her tricks, on her loom, she sets up a great web and begins weaving a shroud for her father-in-law Laertes, asking us to allow her to finish her work before she chooses a husband. Well, we magnanimously consent. But each night, by torchlight, she unravels the day's threads. For three years, she fooled us in this way, until she was discovered. No. Here is the suitor's answer, and you, Telemachus, and all that can hear me should be clear about it. Make your mother marry the man she prefers. We will not return to our estates until she does. Antinous, how could I force my own mother to marry against her will? <coughs> Ithacans, these two eagles battling in the sky are a sign. Odysseus is on his way home with a bloody doom for these suitors. I am familiar with bird lore prophecy, and I know whereof I speak. Old man! Spare us! Go home and read prophecies to your children. Every bird that goes about its business in the airy way is not a bird of omen. Odysseus has met his fate abroad. I've said what I have to say. You have all heard my case. Now give me a fast ship and a crew. I'm going to Sparta to ask after my long lost father. If I hear that he is alive, then harassed as I am, I will wait. But if I hear that he is dead and gone, I will raise a burial mound with all the proper funeral rites, and I will give my mother in marriage to a new husband. The suitors mm. risk their own neck straining Odysseus' estate, mm. but you, citizens, who outnumber the suitors by far sit in silence. Not a damning word have the suitors heard from you. Mentor! You fool. So you would have these men take up arms over a meal. Even if Odysseus was to return and try to rout us from the palace, he'd come to a sorry end fighting alone against so many. Everyone go home. This assembly is finished! <laughs> I do believe Telemachus wishes to cut our throats. He thinks he'll find help in Sparta, or maybe come back with a, a poison for our wine bowl and kill us all off. Or maybe the sea will swallow him up like it did his father. What a terrible inconvenience that would be, dividing up his estate between us. Dear boy, we must always give thanks when the gods deliver us in safety. How can I even approach Menelaus, mentor? I'm not gifted with a golden tongue. And for someone my age to interrogate an older man, 
my father's friend, a king. It seems disrespectful. <laughs> Enough, Telemachus. No more shyness now. You will find the words within yourself, and the rest some power will inspire you to say. Come dine and welcome. <laughs> when hunger and thirst have been driven away, then we'll ask you who you are. But your parents' blood is hardly lost in you, my boy. You must be born of a king. <laughs> my lord Menelaus, who does our visitor claim to be? <laughs> Surely he's the very image of Odysseus. Yes, he must be Telemachus, the tiny baby that was left behind at Ithaca. <laughs> While you Achaeans went to fight at Troy for my sake, Shameless whore that I was. Oh, my dear Ellie. I see the resemblance, too. His flashing eyes, his head, his hands. Surely they're those of Odysseus. King Menelaus, you are right. I am Odysseus' son, Telemachus. I have come to you for advice. Wonderful! The son of my dearest friend here under my own roof. Ask me what you will. King Menelaus. With my father gone, there is much trouble in my house where no one comes to my defense. My palace is filled with enemies, suitors who harass my mother and pillage my estate. I've come in hope that you can tell me some news of my father. Please, tell me if he is alive or dead. Don't soften a thing, tell me anything you know. That's the bed of a brave man of war. They'd like to crawl inside those spineless, craven cowards. Yes. Odysseus will deal that mob a ghastly death. <laughs> yes. Your father's likely still alive. Still alive? I heard it on my own wanderings from Proteus, the old man of the sea. Yes, he's held captive somewhere off in the vast ocean in the nymph Calypso's house. But come, my boy. Nothing can be done about that now. Stay on in my palace for a while, and when you sail, I'll give you a princely send-off. Shining gifts, my best stallions. King Menelaus, though I delight to listen to your stories, I must return to Ithaca. As for a gift, let it be a keepsake. <laughs> Those horses I really cannot take back to Ithaca. Better to leave them here to be your glory. Good blood runs in you, my boy. Your words are proof. Now, take courage. You are now fully grown. And you have your father's wits about you. You must now find a way to put the suitors in their place. Success in this will earn you your sovereignty. Wish 
to follow in his father's footsteps? Does he want his very name wiped off the earth? What would have inspired him to leave me? A god, a god has inspired your son's act of courage. He went to finally learn of his father's fate abroad. Someone's got to. Hear me, Athena. Save my son from these outrageous suitors. Wasn't this all your own plan? Odysseus will return and pay the traitors back. Telemachus, sail him home. The power is yours. Hermes! Coming! As our Messenger, go tell Calypso to send Odysseus home. The exile must return, so his destiny ordains. Pity, hard 
was not made of iron, Odysseus, but descendant of Zeus. Do you really want to do this? Are you really so eager to leave? Huh. Yes, goddess. Calypso. I must go home. Well, good luck to you then. But if you only knew the measure of misery that awaits you, you would stay right here with me and be immortal, much as you pine to see your wife again. I have oh! no choice but to return. Is she really so dear to you then, this Penelope? I guess my claim to be nothing less than she, neither in face nor figure. Hardly right, is it? For a mortal woman to rival an immortal goddess? Goddess. You are right. Don't be angry with me. It's true. My wise Penelope cannot compare with you in either form nor beauty. She is mortal after all. You, you, neither age nor die. But nevertheless, I long, I yearn to travel home. Odysseus and launched him from her shores. But Poseidon, god of storm and earthquake, caught wind of his leaving and his rage boiled. Outrageous! He cried. The gods have changed their minds, but I will give that man his swamping fill of trouble. Poseidon slammed the clouds together, roiled the sea into chaos, whipping the gales from every direction. I need a ship. Can you help me? <laughs> we Phaeacians are a great seafaring people. I will take you to my parents. Figs. Orchards. Apples. Golden pear trees. Olive trees. Teeming vineyards. 
gilded columns. Arches. A great assembly of citizens. Yes, the nobles of Phaeacia. <clears throat> the palace. <laughs> Wait. Go to my mother. Clasp her knees. <laughs> And clasping your knees. A stranger, rise, rise. You are a stranger in my house, and all strangers and beggars come from Zeus, lords and captains of Phaeacia. We will host our guest in the palace, and then we will sacrifice to the gods. For our guest may be one of the deathless powers out of the blue. The gods might now be working in strange ways. Cross that thought from your mind. I am only a mortal man, one whose cup the gods have overfilled with sorrow. Good king, I beg of you, tomorrow at first light of day, put me on a fast ship and send me home so that I may die in peace among my own people. Stranger, I will be the first to question you myself. Who are you? Uh, where are you from? Uh, why were you with my daughter? Well, good queen, to tell you all my troubles, a difficult labor. But I will say this, for seven endless years, the powerful goddess Calypso held me captive on the island of Ojigia. And then suddenly one day she insisted that I leave her. So I built a raft and I drifted on the seas broad back for 17 days. When the shadowy mountains of your good land appeared before me, my heart leapt up, but Poseidon unleashed a horrific storm which destroyed my raft and I was forced to swim. By some miracle, I made it to the shore, and exhausted, I slept all night on dry land. When I awoke, I met your daughter, who moved along the beach like a deathless goddess. <laughs> I begged her for help, and she led me here. Lords and captains of Phaeacia, hear what the heart inside of me would have to say. This stranger here, our guest, though I know not who he is, has come in his wanderings to my palace, and he pleads for passage. He begs we guarantee it. So now, as is our way, let us grant him escort. We will rig a black ship for voyage tomorrow. Demodocus, the gods have given you the gift of music. How shall we entertain our guest? Ah, Odysseus and the great wooden ship. When Grecian warriors from their families did part To free the fairest woman known to life and art The towering walls of Troy kept them from their prize And years of bloody slaughter failed to make them wise Until the great Odysseus said his valiant men Did hide inside a giant wooden horse And Demodocus, rest your soul. Clearly, the god is overtaken by stranger. Friend, tell us your name and tell us your story. Why do you weep so when you hear the fate of the Argives, hear the fall of Troy? <laughs> oh, Alcinous, great and noble king, I am Odysseus. 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 Known the world over for every kind of craft. Sunny Ithaca is my home. A rugged land, but good for raising sons. And Calypso tried to hold me back. She never won the heart inside of me. Never. There's nothing so sweet as a man's own country. And now, since you ask it of me, I will tell you my story. The story of my hapless journey, exactly as it came to pass. <laughs> but where to begin? <laughs> we left Troy with the cries of war still ringing in our ears. And from the beginning, 
we were lost. A terrible gale blew us off course. And we first found ourselves at the island of the Sicones. Well, of course, we sacked the city, killed the men, and divided the spoils between us. And then I, I urged my men to cut and run, but would they listen? No. Mutinous fools. There was too much wine to swill. And in the gray mists of morning, as they slept off their drunkenness, the Sicones attacked, and many of my men were killed. And the rest of us rode away from certain death. And we sailed on, happy to escape with our lives, but sick at heart for the comrades we had lost. Well, desperate to hit upon some friendly place where we might find food and fresh water, we came to the island of the Lotus Eaters. Here my men mingled among the native people who eat the mellow fruit and flower of the Lotus. Forget. Forget. But any of my crew who ate that Forget. seductive fruit lost all desire to return to the ship and continue the journey home. They only wanted to linger there and do nothing but graze upon the lotus. <laughs> well, I forced them back to the ship, lashed them to the rowing benches, and embarked before the rest of my crew could eat that seductive fruit and forget the journey home. Well, disheartened, we sailed on. And soon, we came to the land of the high and mighty Cyclops. Now these are pitiless brutes who live in caves without any laws or any concern for their neighbors. Well, we landed, and I spied a gaping, towering cavern near the shore. There were great flocks of sheep and goats moving in and out. Well, I picked a dozen of my finest fighting men, and to the cave we went remembering to bring along a skin of potent wine, a gift that had been given to me by a priest of Apollo, we explored his den. What we saw there amazed us. There were baskets filled with cheeses. There were pens with kids and lambs, and pails filled with milk and whey. Odysseus, I've got a bad feeling about this place. Let's make away with the cheeses and the lambs at once and put out to sea. No, I won't leave until I see him, until I see what gifts he'll give in guest friendship. That is the custom. Come. Let's build a fire. How much better it would have been if we had only cut and run. Here was a piece of work by Zeus, a one-eyed monster. Well, he entered the cave and heaved a massive stone slab in front of the opening, blocking our escape. Twenty-two horse-drawn wagons could not move that boulder. Strangers! Who are you and where do you sail from? Are on trading spree or roaming the waves like pirates? Men of Ithaca we are, just returning from the wars at Troy. We've chanced upon your island and now we are at your knees in hopes of a warm welcome, even a guest gift, the kind that hosts give strangers. That is the custom. Heed the gods, for we are your supplicants, and Zeus is the avenger of the supplicant. Stranger, you must be a fool to come from nowhere, telling me to fear the gods. We Cyclopes never blink at Zeus or any of the other blessed gods. We have more force by far! <laughs> Give me more and 
tell me your name. I will tell you my name if you promise to give me a guest gift in return. Ah! My name is Nobody. Oh, no. Nobody! That's my name. Oh. Nobody! <laughs> well, I'll eat nobody last! That's my guest gift to you! Cyclops drank bowl after bowl, and eventually he keeled over drunk, vomiting up wine and bits of human flesh. Odysseus, let's kill him where he lays, stab him in his heart, and be gone from this wretched place. No, wait! I explained that that would be our certain death, for all of us put together could not move the massive stone slab that blocked our way to freedom. My heart brooded on revenge. How to pay him back? Oh. Well, this was the plan that struck my mind the best. The Cyclops' great staff. I would shave the tip to a stabbing point, thrust our stake into the fire to get it red hot, rallied my men, and then... find us sheep and nestle ourselves tightly under their fleecy ribs. That would be our escape. Island of King Aeolus, master of all the winds, and he hosted us for an entire month. 
And as a parting gift, he gave me a sack, binding inside all the winds that howl from every quarter. Well, I stowed it carefully in the hold, and we embarked. A fair wind took us for ten days. And finally, glorious Ithaca hove into view. We were home at last. But, bone weary from working the vessel sheets myself, never trusting the ropes to any other man, I fell asleep. And when I did, my crew's greedy curiosity got the better of them, thinking that the sack was filled with treasure. And determined to get their share, they conspired to break it open. And when they did, all the winds burst forth in a sudden squall, which blew our ship back out to sea, and we were lost, wailing, and far from home. And we sailed on. And soon we came to yet another island. But this was the home of the powerful nymph, Circe. Circe. Well, we landed. And I sent out a search party to explore the place. And I waited by our fast ship. An entire day I waited wondering what happened to my men, when suddenly, one of my crew came bolting out of the woods toward the boat. Odysseus! I saw it with my own eyes. They were all changed, transformed by the witch into swine! We must get off this island! We can't leave them! We've got to go and save no, no, them! No, no, don't take me back there! You can't save them, they're all lost. We must get off this island with the men we have. Escape while we still can. Stay here if you want. I'm going, no. for the need is upon me. Oh, Hermes! Where are you going now, my unlucky friend? Your men have all been turned into swine by Circe's powerful magic. Have you come to set them free? Well, I warn you, you'll never leave this island. You'll remain here trapped with all the rest. <laughs> but I can save you. Look, here is a potent drug. Take it, and you'll be protected from Circe's magic. Its power alone will shield you. Now listen, and I will tell you what you need to know when you encounter Circe. Well, Hermes advised me, and then went on his way, and I made my way to Circe's palace. And there she was, brewing her potent brew in a golden bowl. Journey home. Re 
resourceful, Odysseus. Stay on no more against your will. It is your time to return home to Ithaca at last. But first, you must go on another journey. Another journey? A journey to see the great blind seer Tiresias who will lay your fate before you. Uh, Tiresias, but queen, goddess, Tiresias is dead. <laughs> Seed of Zeus, clever Odysseus, you are right. Tiresias is dead. And it is to the realm of Hades and dread Persephone that you must now go. Tiresias alone can tell you what you must do to reach your home at last. Circe, has anyone ever returned from the house of death in a black ship? <laughs> no morsel. But you, Odysseus, are born for exploits. Just step your mast and spread your white sail wide. The great north wind will speed you down to the moldering house of death. There, dig, dig a trench, trench and, and around it pour libations out to all the dead. Then slaughter a ram and a black ewe and fill the trench with blood. The countless shades of the dead will surge around you there and want to drink. Do not leave that place till you have questioned Tiresias yourself. The great seer will appear before you there to tell you where to go to reach your home at last. Treacherous queen, beware these monstrous women. Never indulge them, never tell them the whole truth. Ha, always hold something back. Beware, the time for trusting women is over. Achilles, you died a glorious death in battle. Don't talk to me about glory. I'd rather be a slave, a dirt poor tenant farmer on earth, than to be the king of these breathless shadows. Oh, mother, dear sweet mother, what happened to you? What fatal death overtook you? It was my longing for you, shining Odysseus, that tore me from the life I loved so well. But remember, your faithful wife, Penelope, waits for you, weeping and wasting days and nights, longing for your return. Oh. Oh. Odysseus, man of pain, what brings you here to see this joyless kingdom of the dead? Stand back while I drink the blood and tell you all the truth. You want a smooth journey home, but a god prevents you. You will never escape Poseidon, still in rage because you blinded the Cyclops, his son. Even so, you and your crew may still reach your sunny home again, suffering all the way. If only you could curb their wild desires and curb your own. Even if you do reach the rocky shores of Ithaca, you'll find a world of pain. Be wary, measure, act decisively in the right moment, and you will live a long life and die in peace. Now listen to the trials you must endure before you will ever reach your sunny home again. <laughs> Described for me all the hindrances I had yet to undergo, each one more wretched than the last. And I fled back to my ship. A strong current of the ocean river swept us back downstream and out to sea, 
And sore at heart, I told my shipmates of Tiresias' revelations and how we might escape our fate of certain death together. And it happened exactly as Tiresias foretold. First, we came upon the sirens, those exquisite creatures who spellbind and devour any man who draws too near and hears their haunting song upon the wind. As Tiresias instructed, I stopped my shipmate's ears with beeswax, but I wanted to hear what no living man has ever heard. Men, lash me to the mast, and should I cry out to be let go, only bind me tight. Show me no mercy, and race past this island. Tiresias warned me that I would face a terrible dilemma. I had to sail between them. But do I risk losing my entire ship and crew to the awesome Charybdis, who sucks the swirling water down for the force no mortal to escape? Or do I hug the lower crag, where six-headed Scylla lurks, the yelping horror of black death? devastation. Better by far to lose only six of my men to Scylla than my entire crew to Charybdis. So I secretly made the choice, and six of my men were bolted down by that horrible monster. We rode hard for many days, and put Scylla and Charybdis far astern, and next we came to the good green island of the sun where Helios keeps his sacred cattle. Friends in hardship, Teresius warned, the worst disaster awaits us here. We must race past these shores. You're a hard man, Odysseus. You must be made of iron. Look. Your crew is half dead with labor, and you forbid us to set foot on an island where we might rest. You'd have us blunder off into the night and the mist-bound seas? I knew some power was brewing trouble for us, but I agreed to land and rest. demonic gale that lasted for an entire month. We were trapped on the island. And as our supplies began to run out, I warned my crew again and again not to touch the cattle of the sun, but hunger began to rack their bellies, and the island had very little food to offer. So I climbed an inland peak to pray to the gods for mercy. But while there, a deep and heavy sleep fell over me. (laughs) 
Listen to me, my comrades. All the ways of dying are hurtful to us poor mortals. But starving to death, that's the worst of all! Let's pick off one of Helios' sleek cows! Uh, if the sun means to punish us and wreck our ship, I'd rather die at sea with one deep gulp of death than die by inches on this desolate island here! They slaughtered the cattle. They burnt the bones, tasted the organs, and hacked the rest to pieces. At that moment, I awoke and smelled the smoky savor of roast. Father Zeus, you with your fat sleep! Ah, you've lulled me into disaster! Now the cattle were dead, and soon the gods began to show us some fateful signs. The skin began to crawl. The meat of the hog began to struggle on the spit, and we heard a noise like the roar of a rolling oxen. But horrified, we left the island and we boarded our fast ship. But once under sail, there was nothing but open sea and sky. Zeus mounted a thunderhead above us, and a killer squall came down and destroyed the ship. For nine days I drifted, holding nothing but my keelboard, and on the tenth. The gods cast me on Calypso's island. She took me in. She loved me. Why go over that same old ground again? Crowds of vagabonds craft their lives so tightly none can test them. But you, you give your words such grace and such good sense within, you've told your story with a singer's skill. Creations! This man's suffering is without compare, and he is a guest in our house. Let us give him parting gifts to outweigh that suffering. Prepare him a fast ship for his safe passage home! Damn those creations. The race of lawless, savage men live here. Greetings, friends. Tell me, where am I? Whose land is this? <laughs> you must be a fool, stranger, if you really have to ask. Ithaca's name's reached as far as Troy. Ithaca? Yes, I think I've heard of Ithaca. <laughs> Even from as far away as Crete's broad land. I'm a fugitive, you see. Uh, I killed a man who tried Enough. to rob. Oh, Odysseus. Never tired of your wily tales and tricks. We're both old hands of the arts of intrigue. to recognize in all your endless disguises. You were so kind to me during the war years, but where were you once we'd left Troy? Through all of our disasters at sea? Oh, always the same, your wary turn of mind. 
mind. I never doubted you, Odysseus. I knew you would return home at last. But even I could not fight my father's brother Poseidon, quaking with anger at you. Here is your Ithaca! But what? The trials of regaining the throne await you still. We must be stealthy to defeat the brazen suitors who lord over your house and court your noble wife. Still, Queen Penelope waits faithfully for you in your halls. Though she despairs, the dawn of your return may never arrive. May the gods help me. Clearly, I might have died the same ignoble death as Agamemnon. Great Athena, please stay with me. With you by my side, I could fight 300 suitors. Surely I will stand by you, and together we will make the suitors pay with their blood. Come now, quickly. I will change your appearance so you seem an appalling beggar to all. No one must know you are the great wanderer home at last, not until the time is right. Now, off to the loyal swineherd Eumaeus, true to you always. There, bide your time while I speak Telemachus past the suitor's trap on his way home from Sparta to meet his heroic father, Odysseus in the flesh. grant you all your heart's desires for the royal welcome you have given me here. Ah, every stranger and beggar comes from Zeus. Eat up, friend. It's all we slaves have got. Scrawny pork, while the suitors eat the fatted hogs! Who's the master here, friend? My Odysseus is the king of Ithaca, but he's been gone for 20 years now. His house is overrun by suitors courting the queen Penelope. Advise me well. I'd like to go to the King Odysseus' house and bring a message to his queen. Mingle with that mob? No! Far better to stay here. You miss? You miss? Huh? You miss? To let me kiss. Oh, 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 my dear boy! Oh, dear old friend! I came straight here to see you for myself. You miss? Does my mother still hold out in the halls? Or has she taken a new husband in my absence? Surely she's still waiting. Poor, suffering woman. Oh, stay where you are, stranger. Old friend, uh, uh, where does the stranger come from? Every other stranger and beggar is a wanderer, seeking refuge within the walls of the palace. I'll gladly give you good clothing and send you off wherever your heart desires. But I can't offer you refuge in my house. I can hardly protect myself there. The suitors are far too abusive. They know no limits. Friend, do you let yourself be so abused? Is there no man that you can trust to stand beside you and fight? I am an only son. No one dared us a hand to help me. But it is all in the hands of the gods! Eumaeus, go to Penelope. Tell her I've arrived home safe and sound. But give the news to her alone. Too many plot to take my life. Odysseus, now is the time to tell your son the truth. The two of you must clutch the suitor's doom. I am blazing for battle. Friend, 
What is this change? Who or what are you? Surely a god, traveling disguised, will be kind, I beg you. I am not a god. I am your father. Odysseus, you wept for all your days. No. No. You're not my father. Just some treacherous spirit here to twist the knife in deeper. No mortal man can work such miracles. No other Odysseus will ever return to you. The man and I are he. After 20 endless years of wandering, I have come home. My changing so is Athena's doing. She has the power. <laughs> How did you get here? The great seafaring Phaeacians and Athena's inspiration have brought me here so that you and I can stand united in the slaughter of our foes. The suitors are not just ten or twenty. They're far more. How could the two of us alone fight so many without friends at arms? Friends at arms. Will Athena, flanked by Father Zeus, do? Two great champions, it's true. Oh, but they spend their time in the clouds, Telemachus. lording it over gods. Trust me, when the time comes that we have to face those suitors down in our own halls, the gods will be with us. Now, you must return home and mingle with that arrogant mob. I will follow, looking the old broken beggar. If they abuse me, steal yourself. No matter what outrage I must suffer, endure it. If you are my own true son, born of my blood, let no one hear that Odysseus has returned home, not even Penelope herself. Soon enough, Father, you'll know the courage inside me. said that he had heard that Odysseus is alive, <sighs> held captive on an island by Calypso, ground down in misery, but alive. If only this were <sighs> true. Come, I will tell you more. Brought 
Mr. Town, when we have our own share of vagabonds to deal with, give to the beggar, Antinous. We don't begrudge a morsel to a hungry man in Odysseus' house. And no such qualm would enter that head of yours, bent on feeding your own face. Telemachus, if every one of the suitors gave him the kind of gift I'll give, the house would be rid of him. Give me a morsel, friend. You're nobler than all the rest. You should give a bigger crust than anyone here. And I will sing your praises across the earth. God Almighty, who brought this pest to plague our feast? Pity. Pity. No sense in your head to match your good looks. Why, you'd begrudge your own servant a pinch of salt, you who lounge at another man's board. You filthy beggar! You suitors! I say, let Antinous meet his death before he meets his bride! Antinous! It's a crime to strike the luckless beggar! Your fate is sealed if he's no power from the blue! You lords, affront the noble wife of a man who won't be gone from kin and country long. I say he's right at hand. Antinous! Telemachus, where has your sense of judgment gone? How can you let this stranger be so abused in our own halls? Mother, I, I don't blame you for being angry, but how could I do anything? So many plot to take my life, and no one to help me. No, no, no father to guide me. Your father. Come, Eurycleia. Wash our guest's feet. Prepare him a fleecy bed for the night. in their house, or I swear I will not spare you. Old nurse of mine that you are. Child. Nonsense. You know me. I'm stubborn. Never give an inch. I'll keep still as solid rock. Me my name or my country. I, I'm a man who's had a share of sorrows. Look at the grief some god has dealt me. I long for Odysseus always, but I have spun out my wiles. I can no longer contrive a deft way out of marriage. Now tell me who you are. My name is Atheon. I was born on Crete. I am the younger born. It was in Troy that I knew Odysseus. Stranger, I think I'll test you. W what clothing did he wear? What, what kind of man was he? It's been 20 years since I've seen the man, but I do remember him in a purple cloak, pinned with a golden brooch, engraved with a hound clutching a dappled fawn in a Stranger, I gave him those clothes myself. My queen, take heart. The man is alive. No, I have heard that he is right now on his way home. Odysseus, I tell you, is never coming back. The cursed day that dawns today will cut me off from Odysseus' house. I mean to announce a contest. With those axes, he would often line up here inside the hall and then stand well back and whip an arrow through the lot. 
I will bring them on as a trial for my suitors. The hand that can string Odysseus' mighty bow with greatest ease, who can shoot an arrow through to all twelve axes. He is the man I follow, forsaking this gracious house where I was once a bride. My queen, before that arrogant mob can touch that polished bow, your husband will be in your arms. your zeal to win me. So to arms, my suitors. Here is the prize at issue, and here is the mighty bow of the great king Odysseus. Whoever can string his bow with greatest ease, who could shoot an arrow clean through all twelve axes, he is the man I follow. No easy thing to string his polished bow. Well, let the contest begin. I'll even try the bow myself. Let's see if I'm not man enough at last to win my father's prizes. all my life. Come, my betters, try your hand at the bow and finish off the contest. Up, friends, one man after the next. I could try my hand. You filthy beggar! Let's see if the old force is still alive in these gnarled limbs, eh? Hold your peace! Don't take on younger, stronger men. Antinous! How impolite to slight Telemachus guest. <laughs> Do you really think if this stranger manages to string Odysseus' great bow, he'll claim me as his bride? He never dreamed of such a thing, I'm sure. Unthinkable, I know. But a beggar handling a king's bow, gossip will fly, will be humiliated. How can you hope for any honor at all? You, who will disgrace and devour a great man's house. Why hang your heads in shame over next to nothing? Come, give him the bow. Let's just see. Mother, it is my right to give it or withhold it as I please. <laughs> Go to your own quarters. I will see to the bow. <laughs> Filthy beggar! Are you crazy? Look at our connoisseur of bows. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve! You are! Ah! 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 
Not quite so frail as the mocking suitors thought, eh? Stranger, shooting at men will cost you your life! You dogs! So sure that I'd never come home from Troy? You waste my house, you caught my wife behind my back, no fear of the gods, no fear of revenge? Well, now your necks are in the noose! If you truly are Odysseus, home at last, you have every man, every reason to accuse these men of reckless outrage. But Antinous drove us to the crime. He thought he'd lord over Ithaca, king himself, once he'd cut Telemachus down. But spare your own people. We'll recoup your losses with a tax on the land. No, Eurymachus, not for all your father's wealth. Now fight or die if you think you can escape your fate. Friends, this man will never listen to reason. So fight! Where are the weapons? Charge him in a pack! <laughs> Now, it is unholy to glory over the bodies of the dead. These men had no regard for anyone, good or bad. It was their own indecent acts that brought them to this fate. Let me tell your wife the good news. A god has put her fast asleep. Don't wake her. We need to cleanse the hall and clear the bodies first.
cruel mother. Why do you avoid my father? Finally home after 20 years of brutal struggle. Why such a cold heart? Telemachus, if this is your father indeed, home at last, we too will know each other. We have secret signs known only to us. Telemachus, let your mother test me as she will. She still can't bring herself to believe this grimy beggar is her husband. Unbending. After 20 years, Eurycleia, prepare me a bed. I'll sleep alone tonight. She always had a heart of iron. Strange woman, stranger man, it is not that I am proud or scornful. You look the way my husband looked setting sail from Ithaca years ago. Come. Eurycleia, move our sturdy bedstead out of the room. Take it out now. Spread it deep with fleece to keep him warm for the night. Woman, your words are like a knife in my heart. Move my bed? Impossible. I built our bedroom around a branching olive tree in our court. And from that tree, in that tree, I built our bed start to finish. There's our secret sign. Our life story. Does that bed still stand planted firm? Penelope and Odysseus passed the night wrapped in each other's arms and never slept until the whole story was told. The families of the slain suitors rose up in arms against Odysseus to avenge their deaths. But Athena held the warring factions apart and settled a lasting peace among them. Odysseus performed a ritual which soothed the angry sea god Poseidon. Penelope and Odysseus lived in peace, surrounded by their family, until a gentle death overtook him. And that is all that the muse has imparted to us, your humble bards, of the story of Odysseus. <laughs> 